In this video series, we'll look at how Skyhoy technology can be used to bridge keyboard and mouse over Ethernet to a destination endpoint. There are different methods of doing it, and we are not like in the business of doing this on a large scale. It's just that there is a USB port on the backside of Skyhoy products, and we can utilize that to move the signals from mouse and keyboard to servers somewhere. So that's what I want to educate you on. And to help me, I do have a wiki article on that subject. So if you search mouse and keyboard over Ethernet on our wiki, you will find mouse and keyboard over Ethernet. There's a nice article about that that also outlines the benefits and so on. Actually, let's just try to look at what is like the basic scenario we are trying to achieve here. That is, you have a USB hub typically connecting a keyboard and a mouse to a Skyhoy product. That could be an AirFly Pro like in this case, or it could be a Blue Pill server if you don't need any buttons. But in many cases, I would say that having a physical Skyhoy controller is like the, the great use case that illustrates this because you already have that product in front of you and then attaching the keyboard to it and have that move the signal over the network to your far away server room is a pretty nice idea. So for every device that you want to input this into, you need one of these boxes and that is essentially the um, ATEM, a TCP link for ATEM product from Skyhoy. It is this, this one, so look out for that and we load an alternative firmware on it so that it does the translation from Ethernet to USB. Okay, that's the point. And you need one for each of the devices you want to control. Uh, if you want to control multiple devices, then uh, yeah, you need one for each. So some of the benefits of that is that you actually have no software installation requirement on your remote computer. If it takes a standard keyboard, it will also accept this one. That is the assumption. It's also possible to sort of send key presses from your Airfly Pro. So one of the things we'll be looking at in, in this video is actually not only how can we attach a keyboard and mouse, but also how could we make a button on an Airfly Pro or a, a Skyhoy product send a key combination over to the endpoint. That's another case. Well, um, much of that can be studied on this wiki, including limitations such as uh, security, etc. But the most important thing is that we get the firmware installed on this guy. And to help us do that, we have the uh, firmware updater here. Now, I already have that installed on it. So I want, uh, don't want to bother you with that. So basically what I did right now is to plug this one into a PoE enabled switch. Uh, this is the micro USB plug and it goes into my Mac right now. So the, the witness that this one is actually acting as a mouse and a keyboard to watch my computer will happen the moment we start sending commands over to it and you can see the mouse is moving around. So you'll have to take my word for some of that, but that's, that's basically the configuration that I just showed you on, on this uh, slide that I am connected from here to my Mac that records this presentation so we can see the mouse uh, move when I say, because right now I'm using my standard mouse. Okay, so um, let's go back to the firmware updater because as I plugged it in, you'll see that it was recognized. This is uh, now a device that is seen here and you can use the firmware updater from Skyhoy to actually monitor what's going on. If we press release and clear, you'll see how it boots up. So it announces itself version number, build date, the IP address it has, yes, because it needs to have an IP address. So you need to set an IP, the subnet you're on, the gateway is not really necessary because we are not accessing the internet unless you have devices outside your network. Anyway, that is standard stuff. Now, the server, it is because this device works as a client, TCP client that connects to a server somewhere. And that server is already set up to be the IP address of my PDC view used in this demonstration and this port number. So keep that in mind. It is useful information. Server number two is not enabled, but it may be at a later point in this demo. Okay, now let's go over to th this IP address. The This is the PDC view. Uh, PDC view, by the way, looks like... Um, this just disregard the keyboard you're seeing there. But PC view looks like this in the back side of it. I am basically uh, plugging in. Yeah, you see it right here. Um, so, okay, what are we having? On the back side of this one, we have um, the cable from my USB hub going into the PC view. I, the PC view itself is um, powered over PoE as usual by this network cable. And then we have a mouse and a keyboard that goes into the hub. So that's the configuration here. And in this video, we'll be using XPanel hits, which is a 
application for blue pill devices that will turn their associated or attached keyboards and mice, for instance, into a, a raw panel device on the network. And that is what our um, little server here can connect to. Our client is it? Yes, the um, TCP link for agent. All right, let's let's look at the logs here. Um, it actually says that I already have a connection from my uh, TCP link for ATEM. And um, that's great. But if we scroll a little bit up, you can see that it found the generic keyboard and the generic mouse. Uh, if we look closely, you can see the mouse is available on this port number and the keyboard. There we go. Generic keyboard is available on port 9963. Okay, great. So um, keyboard and mouse is that notice the mouse was on 64. So right now, if we look at the locks of the uh, device here, uh, yes, we can actually see that it is connecting to a server on this IP address 63. It is connected. It is also seeing identification as this, which means a keyboard is detected, setting mode to number one. So it's kind of just doing its thing. But what I want to do now is to take the keyboard and then press a key to see uh, what input we receive. All right. So we do see some input here. That's interesting. If I and actually, the tricky thing here is that as we are doing this, it is actually sending keystrokes over. So if I press W again, you'll see a W coming in. And there you go. So you can see the keyboard is working. Now, <clears throat> that can be a little bit messy if I don't do some housekeeping on what I'm doing on that keyboard and where my mouse is here on my computer. But hey, it just worked exactly as it's supposed to. So that was great. Now, uh, what about the mouse? The mouse is currently not enabled. And that is because I need a second server set up here. So according to the um, wiki document on XPanel hits, you can set up server two like this the same IP, but in this case, 64 as the port. And then as I do that, I'll also have to reset. And now if I just clear out the locks, you'll see that it's confirming that I now have both server one and server two connected to the same IP address, different port numbers. As they connect, they are finding the one, a keyboard, which is being detected. The second one is finding a mouse, which is being detected setting mode number two. Okay, so that's great. And now I use the mouse. You can see here on the video that I am apparently actually able to move the mouse around on my screen. It's a little bit jerky, and that is because the frequency used by XPanel hits by default is reduced to 10 hertz. It's bigger from the mouse itself. It's probably 25 or 50, uh, but it's like pulling up those pulses, but it's also scaling them. And this is why these movements are very moderate in, in their extent. And actually, that's something I can change. So, um, ah, I would then if because in this article, whoops, sorry about that. In this article, you have a nice section that describes the firmware you need to install, how to install it using the firmware updater, how to set the IP address, how to verify the function. All the stuff we have just done is nicely in here, including setting IP addresses. What is the LED codes on this uh, device doing? By the way, it's currently blinking green. And if it was red, we would have a problem. But green is Yes, we are connected. All is good. That's perfect. Now, um, there can also be some approval of keyboards on Mac that you need to uh, to notice. And then there's an article about XPanel hits as a server. By the way, if you want to know what those keystrokes are, then this graphic is provided for that exact reason. Because as I said, the letter four, um, letter A would have the number four. W had tw uh, 26. So this is a great graphic for reference if you want to know what these key code means, especially when you get to actually emulating themselves uh, uh, by reactor. But the XPanel hits page on our wiki might be important here because at the bottom of that page, we have a nice little code that can help us to change the scaling of the um, um, of the um, mouse input. And um, if I just type in that actually and restart, then I will have better performance of my mouse. So now with the, you can see that I still have like the 10 Hertz update frequency, which is like acceptable, but it's not great. Um, but I do have a larger range because the values are being 
um, not divided by 20, which they are by default, but only by five. And if I change this to, to one, then it would be even more uh, dynamic how far I can move the mouse in this way. Okay, so this was a connection between X panel hits, which can also be used to send triggers into Reactor and make changes on AV equipment using Reactor. But in this case, we are using the external uh, client device connected to my computer as a client that connects to the raw panel and takes those raw panel commands in from the keyboard and the mouse. In the next video, I'll show you how you could emulate that from inside Reactor from a Skyhoy panel to create shortcuts like function keys or copy paste. And um, that, of course, is another application, but it's, it's just one you can do because it is accepting the raw panel protocol as a way to move the key presses and mouse movements across the network.